And so I, I, I kind of see that as a subtopic. It's like, what are the file names we need and, and what content should we plan to go into each one? Yeah, I think Lily was, that. that's a lot of what Lily's like spreadsheet document was doing. Okay. I, I made kind of my own version that I think echoed a lot of stuff similarly, but may have been a bit different on the on some of the details. Uh, and I mean, had, had its differences and similarities. I kind of, I had trouble a little bit reading um, through like the three kind of steps you did, Lily, of like. Yeah, I, I, I can go. I, I, I made a different, I made a slightly different chart, which I may be able to. All right, well, let's just do, let's do this. Let's look really briefly at the three different topics. So let's see. Is this, is this the same thing? It's at the top of the file now, but I wasn't sure. Or is this something else? Yeah, it's this one there, number five. Okay. Number oh. five is the Excel. All right, number five is, is that file structure. Okay, great. And Michelle, is yours linked there too? Um, no, I was told to kind of keep it separate for now. That's what I understood. Maybe I did not understand. It doesn't really matter. No, that's correct. I, I think we will link match. it so we can see them all on the same screen at once. Not worry about whether someone was told to put it on there or not. Just wondering if you have it on there now. Sure. I, okay. I think we were saying. Is this okay. <laughs> all right. Like. And uh, I'm going to put this in there too, which was oh, you just put it in the thread. Okay. Works. I didn't. I didn't put it in the thread. I will put it in the thread. Question. And I'm just going to make it as a bullet. So then we can look at them each and then see. Okay, what are we talking about the same thing? And then let's see if we can spend some time. I think it'll be like really helpful to have. This is our path going forward for the structure. Um, I, I don't think it addresses what you what you mentioned. I think there are some good points in there. I wasn't sure how much we wanted to split more into abstractions or to, cause, cause a lot of Lily's work I think was consulted. Let's look at the three things first, Michelle. That's what I'm trying to do. So let's look at those three things. Is yours, can you add the link to yours? I, I thought you meant in the Slack and I added okay. that in Slack, but I can add that to the Google doc as soon as I find Where that is it? document. Ah, here we go. Okay, I just hadn't popped up yet. But I thought we said that in order to keep the folder clean, we keep our own copies on our own drive. Then when we share, we discuss, and once we agree on an item, then we change the master plan. Yeah, I think that was our homework. Um, and, it, and I didn't I, follow it. Um, I, know, I, I know that was a good, I think it was a good plan. But now that we're here and we have time to like meet synchronously, I'm hoping we could just talk through what are the different things. All right. And my, sorry, my browser is being not responding right now. Um, let's see. Someone else, let me see. Okay, it seems like it's working now. I was gonna say, someone else wanted to take over the share, screen share they could. So I did this by um, repository as opposed to kind of the multi-step thing. The steps were, it, does this need explanation? If so, I can explain. Well, let's just take a minute to look at it. And I guess everybody has the links on Slack too. I'll, I'll link this one on Slack just so that all the three ideas are in the same thread. If it's easier for people to see them that way. All right, so. Oh, 
By the way, if you click on a cell, you can see its contents up in that top bar that has FX next to it. I understand that, but when I'm trying okay, to- I don't, Okay, that's fine. That is totally fine. To I'm just it. making sure that you are aware of that feature. I don't know what you're aware of or not. All right. I'm telling you that I'm aware of it so that you know. Sounds great. All right. So well, I can do that fairly names, quickly. Rather than focus on names, I'm just trying. Well, so it's like I don't want to just make them full width because see, this one's ridiculously wide and there's nothing there on the left. So I actually had it at the width that I wanted. <laughs> um, rather than focus like repository by repository, or rather than file by file. Well, I think we do want to get to that level of detail. We do, we do. Um, let's see. I, yeah, I'm actually really not understanding this because there's a lot of repeated names and I'm not sure what's, I'm not really sure how to interpret this, but maybe Michelle, do you want to take like a minute to explain this and then we'll try to take a minute to like look at the other one and then we'll We'll see how it fits into um, just the, like the short bullets that I had, and then we can talk about like. Okay, what are that things sounds that... good. Okay. So uh, actually, I can't draw. I need a down arrow. So these columns are the files as they currently are, right? Right here. Okay. Um, these columns are what changes might happen. So, for example, basic questions would be split up into AL questions. And and AL questions on the AL on the AL you know assembly line um, repository. Oops, that's not what I meant. And basic and another part of basic questions would be split up into a file. I don't care what that name is, but on the Mass Access repository, that is specifically for Mass for Massachusetts stuff. So that happens a lot when things are split into separate files or when there's a possibility, right, of things being split into separate files. Again, this is just brainstorming. Um, and then there are times when, you know, here, this is gonna be, this file is gonna be deleted. This file right here is gonna be deleted and it, its contents would be combined with a different file that is named there. Um, on to the right here, there is a list, also a list of the existing files, what I understood their purposes to be, and a summation of like a proposal for something that could happen to them. So that's further to the right. Okay. All and right. Sometimes there are details like, you know, like what specific things, places they could be moved to. But again, you know, it was a brainstorming document. Okay. Um, all right. So we talked about this a little bit Lily, last week. Do you want to just give like the same kind of like one minute overview of how, how to interpret this document? Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here, uh, section one is just to merge the three repositories into one place and then group it um, by where they came from. And then I said, actually, basically did that into my playground. I was checking each file, run each, I tried to run each file to see what it does. And some of those I have questions. So that, that led me to create this, uh, the recognition. Okay, go to the next tab, proposals. Ah, oh, okay. So here, I, I went through those files that I had questions or had thoughts about how to change them. Like for example, the first one, it has, it, it has a very short block of code. It just defines this class. And then when I look at the, the interview generator module, I think that um, block of code can be just moved into, merged into the generator module. So then I said, okay, what do we do with the first, um, with the assembly line module? I propose to make it a general container so that we can put other things into it later. Uh, and then 
do you want me to go through all the details or that's not enough to explain why XI created this hat? Okay, no, I think the, I think the overview makes pretty good sense. Right. Yeah, okay, so once I, I, I go, go through all these files, I realized some of the files can be deleted or merged. So after this reconciliation, we go back to sheet one. We, that's why we get into section three where I kind of put the question marks to the files that I think are not needed. And I did the kind of rename a little bit, but the uh, section four is completely renamed just to make it more uh, con con consistent. And, and emphasize their functionality. So are you, are you, is this brainstorm about merging all of them into one repository? So all of these is merging mean merging all of them into one single repository? At the time when I created the worksheet, my impression was that we were going to use one um, new repository. But I think at the last uh, meeting, last week's meeting, um, decision was made that we we're going to use two. But I think that doesn't matter. This because they color separates them, so we can still do with it. You can you can put into separate sections, but it doesn't matter. So long as you know who belongs to what, you can still use this. It's up to you. All right. You know what I mean? If, uh, if yeah, you're saying your piece were all good. the green ones put into the wizard repo and all the purple ones. Lavender ones put into the um, the, the, the assembly line repo. So right. either way, it should work. This is more about how how this how the files um, flow through. It's like streamline the files structure can consolidate them. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, um, and. I was focused on just like my my like last minute post on the Slack was focused on like a really narrow question, which is like what should be that collection of YAML files right now, which is the big one is basic questions, but it doesn't just have questions. It has things that set things, things that control the display and formatting, um, it has actions like sending stuff to the court, it has that code in there as well. Um, okay, so then some, it sounds like a yours is more to the next level, which is more detailed level. More detailed, for sure. Actually, I think this is kind of more of an abstraction of like... That's not, we don't have to necessarily worry about okay. that. <laughs> okay. Okay. But anyway, um, so I think that's just one part, no matter what, it's not as big of a scope as all of the repositories and the different Python files, for example, are not part of the scope that's of what true. I was... It was just just the things that are handled right now inside the basic questions and the supporting files that it, it includes right now. Um, so I guess I see those as a couple different things. Um, we've started talking about this a couple of times, but this feels like this level of detail could be helpful for us to get stuff going. Um, let's see. So if we're talking about, the, are, are we talking about the, <laughs> um, what? Don't jump in just yet. I hadn't finished my thought, if that's okay. So before- Maybe you should say a word when you finish your thought and then I'll know. Michelle, but... please just wait, okay? Because now you're interrupting for me to say like, now I'm gonna lose my thought that I had in my head for you to, to dictate how I should talk about my thoughts. Um, so, I want to just think about like what is something that we can do that will have an achievable result in the next week essentially that's my goal it's like because we've been circling around these this breakdown discussion the different content without having actionable things we need something that's at this detailed level that something can, someone can implement we do need to have the really big level concept of like what are the repositories that we're working in and what that should go in there or at least have a framework for deciding what goes into which repository, right? I, I don't know what you mean by more detailed because the, the I mean, we're 
in the other one we are talking about actual like files that exist so um i think i think yours is a good addition to the discussion i think it's the same discussion just a smaller bite of the same discussion so do we want to incorporate that into the kind of visualizations we have of um it could and, be the, the same and, yeah, and, and speak that. more we and didn't. speak more concretely right that my my goal is to be concrete here yes so let's see so we could keep these and these are basically just very small tweaks of the existing files um but oh might, yeah but you have other but you've right. named other changes right yeah and we might just okay. think so one of my first questions is like, um, when we're talking about um, sending to court code, that seems to me also state specific content because we said that courts and their information can't be assumed to be like that, that, that the assembly line repository can't assume a lot about what information is available to courts and what will be done with the court code. So that was one of our questions last time was like, in what ways can court code and sending to court code be abstracted? Um, so like what, what of that can live in assembly line, right? So. I don't think that's quite right. Um, but I can understand how that got confusing. So what I said is it wouldn't be really useful to have a generic base level object that represents a court, but we should have each state would have its own way to reach the core API that it exposes and makes available as an interface to the rest of the code that we have. That was my, okay, so... I don't know, for example, how they break the courts into divisions and departments. Um, and at what level of specificity you could locate a court for a certain type. Right, but for example, for sending an email, like that was, right, that was one of the questions, like can we trust that the, a court will have an email, right? Like which, which parts of a court can we make assumptions about or which parts of, of a court can we provide hooks for? Is that... No, I'm, I think what we had, what I was intending to convey is that we should be able to say the court object has these features, but how you get to that representation, it may not be as useful to over-specify that, like at a class that each other state-specific class inherits from. There's probably an abstraction level where it's useful, but I don't think it would require it would wouldn't have a lot of overlap with the current ma course class that was my point really if you're going to use the send to court code that's assuming there's an email i assume i think i mean i guess we could have a drop in replacement for it that sends it by e-filing then it would still that wouldn't be state specific necessarily in the same way it should have some metadata that the court object exposes that would allow you to send it correctly to the right place. Rather than like critique and, and get into the details of like what is and isn't um, the right classification, because I think that is going to end up being a debate no matter what. Like we'll have some places where there's fuzzy borders and we'll want to rethink what goes where. From this, I think we have a lot of like really good ideas about no. So for me, I know one thing I'd like to start working on is okay, if we make a new repository, I would like to start adding new questions in the right place right file. So before I do that, I want to know like what file should it go in? That's a pain point for me right now. And like actually Caroline had put a really good thought of like one question which I already we'd already been thinking about for like a couple of weeks. Like we need a question a way to handle when people are sending forms that don't go to the court because we have a, a ton of those forms right now that are it's really relevant for. Let's see. What would Maybe that's helpful to start with, like what pain points we're we trying to solve. And 
and um, where where do we need decisions to make progress? What I, we... Yep, go ahead, Lily. I think we can probably create a, a, a Google Sheet file as action plan where we lay out what is the first step, who is doing it, what is the second step, who is doing it, what is the timeline. Okay, I think that's a good uh, strategy for how to in implement it. And you're thinking a Google Sheet? Or maybe Word, or, uh, Google, right, 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 Google Word, Word. I think that's a good idea. Let's, I think that's, that's a good goal for us to be able to meet today, I think. Like you can, you can even start now. We can say, okay, step one, Quentin start a new um, repo. Step yeah. two, we will change check into, for, for example, I, I, I made a changes to the wizard, which now can download the package zip file. That's and great. also it uses the, um, uses a package YAM file to be included in the in the interview file instead of the basic questions. That way, in the future, we, if we need to break, break questions into multiple files, we will not break the existing interview file, interviews. Okay, I think that's a good idea. So like, this is actually like, really fits into this. So like, there's an over umbrella, umbrella file. Do you want me to show you just one minute? You'll see what I mean. Might it be useful to we... use issues and be able to assign people to those issues? Um, once we have a place to assign the issues, I, I feel like we don't quite know what repositories issues are going to be assigned to yet. But maybe that's a really easy thing that we can knock off the top Or a of. Trello board, right? Trello board would be another idea. Sorry, I, I just I'm saying that instead of a Google Sheet because there's sort of already project management like things that are like that's their thing and they may end up giving us better ways to to manage the process of moving over. If we think that won't be useful, that's okay too. I, I, the, the reason I'm thinking doc, uh, doc is because then in it we can we, we can explain if needed to get add details and whatever. So it has free space basically and it's in one file. We don't have to go to different cards and uh, look for the link or whatever because we have this shared folder which is specifically for this Monday meetings. That's a good point too. I mean, I think those are both good really point. valid points. I, you know, we also have to decide like, what is the timeline for this project? If it's something that we're thinking, it feels like it, honestly, we should be able to work on this in the next two weeks. Although I recognize Christmas is included in there, but it doesn't feel like it's a project that take a lot of time. We just have to have decisions and then the implementation should be pretty quick. But maybe part of the implementation is figuring out what decisions need to be made, which would slow it down a bit. Um, but to, can we just go back to this point? Like, so what, what are other people's goals? Like, what is, what do other people see as the value here? For me, this is the big one. Like, I want to be able to add a, a new question. I want to know it's going into the right place. But now it feels like a little fuzzy where it should go. Other people have other pain points that they were trying to solve. I mean, they were actively developing on or working on and they were like, if we had a structure for all this stuff that was clearer, it would help me achieve my goal better. Well, I think there's a, like a fair, argument for keeping it in one file because it makes it just easier to find. I go to one file, I know I can find it there. It's not the same as the question that I was asking, but it's an interesting discussion point to add. So my pain point is when I go to look for a question and I don't find it in basic questions, I'm not sure where to look. That is the point, the pain point stated as a description, I don't know.
Okay, I have, I, I have a stupid question, which is related to this. If yeah. I generate an interview using the wizard, and then I later on I found okay, I, I forgot to name a field in my in my PDF file. So now I have a new field. Can I just add a a, a question to answer that to, to fill in that field without get involved with the basic question? Or does it have to go through basic question? I don't quite understand the question. Okay, I, I, I have one question in my PDF file. I run through the wizard, it generates an interview. Mm -hmm. As I'm working on this interview file, I found out I have another field in my PDF file. I don't want to go back to wizard, rerun it. Yeah, you don't have to go back to the wizard. So, so now I add a new question. I say, okay, this question goes to this new field, it gives the value to this new field. This part of the work, does they have to somehow go through the basic question mechanism or can it act outside of the basic question flow? It just, it's like the, the end result comes from the basic question processing plus my manual work in my, that, that's related to the second field. Are they kind of questions that you're thinking of, Lily? It's like it's a you're adding a new person label, so you want to use like the way we asked for a person's name or an address. Is it that kind of thing, or is it just like a regular simple variable? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's abstract principle that I'm trying to figure out. Does all my do, do all my questions have to be processed by basic questions? Or can so, some of them handled by my own code? Yeah, no, I, I get that. I'm just trying to tease it out to see if we can figure out like what part is the best way to answer. Because like as Michelle pointed out, you don't have to use the wizard when you add new stuff. But if your question is like, should how do I use the same format that comes from the basic questions file that mostly only rele is relevant for like people objects right now? I guess a few other things, but mostly people objects, court, like uh, the code that gets generated from the wizard that doesn't, that just links to basic questions. Like that's just a few types of objects. So I'm trying to figure out like what type of context we're talking about here. So, so I, 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 okay. For example, I don't want to go through all the questions that's in the basic questions because I know how I can do it you Just don't have to already. Is that possible? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a quick answer. I think the answer is yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. So in that, in that case, so when, when Michelle said, um, don't know where to locate a step, a step in basic questions. So then there's the alternative answer, which is you don't have to look at this basic question. Yeah. Right, but I do want to use basic questions. I, I mean, I do want to use the assembly line when, when I want to use it. That a bit. Not doesn't have to be in like a lot of detail, but what were you thinking of? What kind of things do you try to locate now that you don't know what are and why do you need to locate? Them? For example, stuff for the cover page. I wasn't sure where it was. Right. I was just trying to figure out details of implementation and like how to best work with it. So like I was. I, I think there was stuff that I was trying to figure out about the PDF field, PDFs and how they were being concatenated. And like, I was trying to find like okay. how, where that behavior was, et cetera. So this isn't like a, but it is a point, it's a pain point. So it's like relevant to debugging complex behavior. And without running it, because I didn't want to build a whole interview in order to be able to just look at that behavior. I just wanted to be able to find out where it was, you know. Okay, so that specific example, I'm hoping that the AL documents class can replace the way that that works now. Yeah. I, yep. So you were looking at it to try to critique the AL documents class, basically? No. I, this was a while ago before AL documents even existed. You asked for an example. That was the example. That's all. Okay. 
Um, okay, well, that's it's helpful. I mean, because I think that's the types of pain points we're trying to solve are engineering pain points. And so one of them is the current structure of things doesn't always easily convey like where relevant content is to be found. And some of it is in YAML files. Some of it's in Python files. That border can be fuzzy when it's really needs to be in a YAML file because it's behavior that the interview does, but it invokes code. So, okay. I don't know if this is the same pain point or like in the same discussion, but I had the impression that oh, at least some of this refactor would is to separate like actual mass court stuff from general stuff, like like just like because I know like we'll at least we'll be starting to do stuff with Louisiana soon, um, or at least help exactly. them do stuff with our stuff with Louisiana soon, and so separating statewide. I don't know if that's considered in this or if just is a different topic. Very much so, yeah. Yeah. Wait, but we, but you said we didn't. Okay, that's fine. I don't know. I, maybe I misheard. Um, and then, I mean, I think that a related point, like part of my breakdown here was thinking how when people want to change one part without having to change everything else, it might be helpful to let them go to a file that's specific to that issue that they, they need to, to do. So like I. So here I'm thinking we have we have our questions, which are like they work for any type of interview. Then we have our questions that might be specific for one subject area. Okay, it's nice and easy to understand. I add a new subject specific file if my interview uses a subject specific file. And then we have state specific content. I guess that can override any of these. And then we have like layout and display code where like maybe you're working in the same state, but you want your own gloss or style for those files. So what, what do you mean by layout and display code? Do you mean stuff like CSS or do you mean stuff deeper than CSS? Um, not just CSS, anything that affects the visual display. So that's like the, um, the nav bar icons, um, the footer under element with link to survey. Great. Anything that's it. just purely like, this is the way it looks. Okay, but like maybe the names of buttons. So it's controlling the display. Uh -huh. It's not always CSS. Uh -huh. I'm not sure display is quite the right word for that, but I think I understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm only saying it because language is, is, some, is part of what we're example? talking about. What would be a better word? So I think we can think about that. It's the only other thing I can think of. Visual effect. View, is that what you said, right? Visual, visual effect. Visual? I, I think it's more about like the interview config features, right? The like interview or interview meta features. It's not, it's not, a, it's not about like, it's not like necessarily just is this green or blue or does it appear at the top or the bottom? It's not like it's a different skin. Like when I think of visual and display, I think of a different skin for the same thing. We're talking about configuration features like footer and um, default names of questions, right? So, um, uh, so I mean, the only one that fits that is the footer and other under element, where it's like actually different content gets put in. But the names and names and locations of buttons, so the names of buttons is, as well. That what? Is, that's a just that's a visual thing. It's not changing. So if, if, you, if you change it from back to undo, you're not changing a color, you're changing actual text. And that's a configuration item in, I mean, I don't know if that's the best word for it, but to me that feels closer than just, it, it's not simply a, it's got a background or it's not got a background or change how it, I mean, you change the word you read, right? Yeah, I'm grouping together things that change the way things look on screen that don't change the functionality. Um, and 
I think we could talk about what are configuration options, whether they all are subsumed in that really broad classification, or if there are things that we want people to configure, like per install on your Docker sample server that aren't just about that kind of thing that's not functional. But to me, I think grouping all the things that are just about the appearance and not the function makes sense. Okay, so the footer wouldn't be in there. And um, in that case, I might call it a skin or it could be display. I mean, that's fine, visual or display. If the footer's not there, then that makes sense. All right, so can we, thinking about like that type of classification, To what extent, because I haven't dived really deeply in Lily or Michelle into either of your overviews, um, is this re, it doesn't seem like this is repeating the work that you've already done, right? To go through and think about what are the big types of files we might want to have for just specifically what's in basic questions and other related files yet. Feels like that wasn't like dived in deeply. Is that correct? So breaking out into, for mine, breaking out into like, general questions versus state specific stuff that was handled. If we want to break it down further into um, like breaking out display or visual or config or whatever you want to call it, um, that wasn't something that I approached or the housing specific versus other. I didn't, I don't think I have enough domain knowledge to like manage something like that. Like, I don't know what would be like I've always wondered about Gal and like Guardian ad litem or whatever and and if that is a separate thing but I figured I'd leave that up to people who had domain knowledge. In my version I I I did I didn't do what Quentin has listed. I I, I still think Quentin's list is more the next level which is more detailed. Mine is, is okay. focused on the, stru the file structure, how to combine them, rename them, delete what's not used. That's what my version was doing. Okay. All right. Are there other types of things like focusing not on names right now, but just on like the types of things that our files do and knowing they're fuzzy borders? Like I think we've already identified one, which is like some things that are we're considering visual might be more like just functional. Well, not necessarily. That's not, I think, the distinction. That, so let's not finish these other sentences that way. Um, but are there other types of things that you might list here that kind of fit this broad classification? Are there other ways we could break up the basic questions file that might be functional? where like you could group the different things it's doing. I mean, I think there's certainly an, if, if you want to get more fine grained, there's stuff that's asking about personal information versus stuff. There is, I think there was stuff that was asking about at least in one of the modules that was dealing with proceedings versus dealing with like, I mean, there's stuff like addresses and, you know, names, etc that are like have no really great categorization but then there's stuff that gets more specifically into um witnesses you know like i don't like it depends how you want to split it up right there's a lot there so that i only have to do with the to, question what? i'm not sure i'm wondering if that's really just this breakdown here okay hold on All right. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's functional code like when you set defaults. There's defaults like um, user equals user role is oh. user user role. So there's defaults like user role and things like that that are set yeah. um, in basic questions. To figure out if that's like what we want to do or not. I don't know if we absolutely need to in all the cases, but 
some of the stuff just grew organically. So like user role might be one of the settings. Actually, as I, as I said that, I wrote settings, but I don't know what uh, things I was thinking of here as being settings. Okay. So. I'm thinking about so this. So they're, they're defaults. Like like that one. Specific. Say that again. As I'm thinking about this, like the footer under element of the survey, that might just be like a state specific thing that might fit in that umbrella. Fine. That seems to me to be a like company or like organization specific thing, right? Because like that's, for example, where we put the feedback survey. And that's exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. So, and, and that would be per organization. Yeah, like you could, like even if we moved to new states, there would still be like um, fuel squirt or like trial squirt in that state that might have different things. Yeah, we could, when we say state, we could have a, a more broad term, but really it's just about like your install um, or, I mean, it can always be overridden, but like in, anyway. I think I think the feedback form also may deserve its own. I know I know part Let's of the feedback form has its own. We're focused on that one element, which I think we've agreed so, fuzzy. So there's a Let's footer just, slash hang on. Okay. Well, I'm worried that we're gonna perseverate on just this one thing because we've already spent a lot of time on it and I think we don't need to decide where it goes. We I'm thinking of it as of what the files are. I'm that is why I'm interrupting you. I'm, I apologize for that, but I do think we want to try to achieve something where we can act on it in the next week. So are there- So I think as a repository, the feedback form is not just its own. I, I think that whatever, whatever else, footer under element, I looked at that as, as elements in the page. The feedback form I think is a different category than like question library and personal information than I'm, I'm just saying, if you're breaking things out into functionalities, you know that this the is feedback, a tricky one. Like, like, like the feedback form is an abstraction that assembly line can contain that lets put that lets people put their um, own information into it and their own, right? Like it's a. I think we know, Michelle, that it's on the border. I don't think we have to decide before we can start. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. But okay, let's move on. All right. So are there other types of functional ways to classify the things that these files do now that we want to make sure we capture when we decide how to break them up into different files? Does anybody have other? I have not started a basic question, so I'm sorry. I can't get more than that. Okay, that's, that's fair. It might be mostly just Michelle and I who have thoughts on that. Um, Bryce, I know you're new to it. And uh, you, are there thoughts that you have about whether you, you know it's in there now or you think maybe it should be in there at some point? Um, I don't have too many thoughts. The only thing I'm like not certain about is sin, like Cindy to court code as a, as a separate thing. Um, mostly maybe I just don't quite understand what all is going on there um, or like how that's different than state specific. Okay, I think that's a similar thing point to Michelle was making too. Yeah, 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 but yeah, but I think like that's you know, yeah, we've talked about that a bit. So, and Michelle definitely has more to contribute than I do there. So, no, that's not what I meant. I, I think I have the same questions basically. Read it as yeah. If we're trying to think about like what are things that are how we're classifying stuff. Shoot, my browser is acting really bit badly. Um, If anyone else has it open and wants to do a share, let do that. It might be just because of the sharing. Um, I can. Oh, actually, yeah. now that I'm not sharing it, it seems to go a lot better. Yeah. I have something quick to share. Okay. So I can, yeah. I should be able to pull it up. Sure. Sorry, yeah, Lily, you should go ahead. Go ahead, Lily. Okay. Um, oops, you can start share. Okay. Okay, so maybe Bryce has to, I think she means share screen, so. 
I think you have to oh, okay. unsha unshare your screen, Bruce. All right, gotcha. Sorry. Thought you meant just generically share with us as a thought, or sorry. Okay, I in my playground I made some changes with the wizard, so now we can download it as a package. And then after you download it, you you can just go to there, you add a new project, and then upload it to install the package. Um, That's great. So it has like the, the the document and the YAML file all together, basically. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, and I have tested it. I, I go to, I created a new project. That's just awesome. Up, up, upload it and it, and it runs just just a fine. And I just I want to show you. This is the include now. It has it has this package file which is a basic question. Dot yum. Um, yeah, I think that's a good name for it too. And you know. how does it how does it upload both at the same time? No, what, Sorry. What how do, how do, how does it upload the template and the um, and, and YAML at the same and, time? Uh, Quentin told me that uh, Jonathan is already doing it in his interviews. I just borrowed his code. I show you here. So you just do this all this line, and then you have this. Oh, freaking awesome! Yeah. So this is good. Uh, I mean, this is actually a very simple change. Now I want to show you the the package file. Sure. So I just took a part of it. I mean, took this part of from the basic questions, just cut it and put it here. And this way, if we ever want to rig this into multiple files, it will work. It will not break existing um, interviews. And we can add more for new interviews. You know, we can expand. So this, so this is, is like I mean the umbrella we, file, right? Yeah, this is what I meant in that Excel worksheet where I said we add this package, new package file to insulate the AL interviews from the basic question itself so that we can leave room for changes. Um, now, I do have two questions, basic questions. Um, one is when I run, run this, when I, when I run this, even though here it has title, short mm -hmm. title and this one stays, I should have, I mean, this will be used, I think. Right. I, so the reason is because the, you're including those other files after the metadata section, which I think I might have fixed in the wizard. So you might be on a, a different fork than the one I fixed it in. Oh, OK. So I, I checked out this um, the order of question the 50. Files. Maybe it's old. All right, good. That's great. Because right now it still says mass mass access instead of this. Yep. Oh, real real quick, I want to just get us on the same page with naming conventions, which is lowercase with underscores. For our naming conventions for everything for everything that's possible is lowercase with underscores. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, and another question is um, where there is this. So what, Quentin, what were your, when, when I last brought up this idea of an in, uh, umbrella that included other files, um, what were your, I can't remember, what were your objections at that time? Because I thought there was something you brought up and I don't remember what it was. I don't remember um, that I did object to that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think, I think what we want to make sure is that if people only want to include, it might have just been a, a boundary question, like what would go into the different files and what would be in which repository. Um, so like, I don't think we'd want to mix Massachusetts specific stuff and have it always be included. Could it have been about when we were talking about the content specific files? I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if okay. it'd be helpful for us to, to revisit. Well, I just if 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 there was something that was relevant from that time, then we I I think it will take too long okay. to reconstruct what the exact question was and how. Okay, it that's it. fine. That's fine. If there um, if if it doesn't occur to you now, then maybe it wasn't like maybe it was relevant then and is not no longer relevant. 
I mean, I think that the key is if we have different functional files and they can clearly be separated in a way that's useful to the interview author when they want to customize just one piece of it, then whether it's an whether we have the umbrella file or not doesn't harm the person because they can just decide, okay, I don't want the whole package, so I'm just going to put in the five out of six and then put in my sixth one with my replacement. So it, it shouldn't really, I can't really see a negative to it. Um, if I, if we thought, if I had said that there was a negative to a, a, a different iteration of it, I don't think it. It isn't more, showing up now. That's fine. If it's, if it does not occur to you now, then. It does not. And I, I think and it was it's just not relevant now. That's a okay. specific set of facts, I think is the difference there. I, I don't okay. know. All right. My second question is this logo. I tried to just change this, this into this new new uh, package name, but it didn't work. So I had to do the, the, the other way, Jonathan's way to do this. OK. It has um, to be installed on the server. That's why. Oh. But I do okay. think that the static way of doing it might be better. What did you do? So how do you include it from the static file? Oh, you do set parts. Um, that works. But again, it's like, yeah, you know, that's part of what I was thinking about with the different breakdown of the umbrella, the different YAML files for basic questions. If we tell people, hey, this is just a set of questions, and then it, it runs some mandatory code block that's not really setting a question anymore, right? That's it's doing something active to your changes your your interview state in a way that you might not have expected. So that is why I don't want to have too many mandatory actions take place in the file that just contains questions. That's, so that's one of the boundaries that I started thinking about. And it's like, how can we break these files apart? Yeah, I think I think this is this is a place where and this would be an organization. Like this would probably be moved in a into a file that is an organization specific file as opposed to into the assembly line questions file. I mean, I guess there's no reason. I was thinking, oh, a state is the same as an organization, but I suppose there's no reason to not have those as two separate contents. We could encourage that modeling. So I think that's a good point. This is still being weird. Yeah, this, this file is so big, over a thousand lines. So definitely it should be split up. Yeah. Um, okay, now the last question is uh, where do I check, check the checking the changes? That's why I'm keep asking, okay, when I'm going to create the new repo. <laughs> All right. Um, I can create a new repo today. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and come up with the repo names. I think we have an idea for the files. We can be a little flexible about the files. We don't have to be literal about them. If we do, I mean, the, the advantage of the umbrella file is that if we move questions around, it doesn't break other things. So if we decide to rearrange the questions, right? So that's kind of the yeah, that's the, the, the advantage that I think we can see from that. Though if we're giving people access to the specific files, right? If people do instead reference the specific files, then we will have to think more carefully about when we change those. The other thing is that uh, we can start to work on this new repo for a while until we feel comfortable. Then we ask, we, we give it to people to use, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is true. It yeah. would be nice to have it before like a month from now. I think that's a good goal because that's when the people will be starting, I think the 21st or something. I think that's when classes start up again. So that could be a good goal to have it done by then. And it feels very achievable because we're, we're not, re we're just talking about doing some refactoring that's undoable. As Michelle pointed out, if we have the package YAML and we reconfigure stuff, we never have to touch the parent file to do it. Even things like what repositories we have can be flexible. As long as the one repository that has that um, alpackage.yaml is the same then we don't have to change anything really. Um, yeah, I, so we have one we call AL package that can I guess it should be like AL, AL umbrella. AL ALMA should be the one that our wizard makes people include. 
and then they can change it to their state specific one if they have that should include the big right. corporate monopoly, right? Wait, they wait, wait, wait. They this should this shouldn't be including the Massachusetts one. Like no. assembly line is I thought it was supposed to be state agnostic. The wizard will be state specific though, right? Or at least at some point down the line we might have a drop down of here are the states you can choose from. Um well you when that that happens, isn't how I then, then we, we can create a separate packages and then we can name them accordingly, right? For example, if okay, you 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 have a list of five states, and each state has its own specific uh, state specific question. Therefore, their basic questions should have a should should have a separate. Uh, well, I think file. In that case, think, the package file itself will have okay. Massachusetts package or New York package, you know. You, you will have so multiple think, copies of the packages, each one for each state. Is that making so sense? So I think so. I think we're we're talking more from what I understood from what Kenny said was we're talking about the wizard, not the not the questions, not the assembly line questions. I mean, you you did say the wizard. So did you? Was it? Were you specifically talking about the wizard, or were you talking about wizard, the assembly I, line package? Because because okay, this include this line of include is generated by the wizard, right? So, if we're going to separate the best questions into state specific, let's say we have New York and Massachusetts, then the I include line will need to be state specific. So, so when you use the wizard, you will say, okay, which state? Are you in? You say okay, Massachusetts or New York. If you say New York, then I will include the New York package. Dot young. If it's Massachusetts, it's Massachusetts package. Dot young. But this is okay. Maybe I don't understand what we're talking about. And then about in Massachusetts I... package. Dot young. I'm going to include Massachusetts basic question. Dot young. And in New York package, I say New York. Dot basic questions that young. So they, they, they all line up specifically for this thing. I, th I think something that would be more flexible for this would be to let people decide on their own includes. Like if they want to include a package.yaml, a, a like New York package.yaml, they can. I think ours can just include assembly line, whatever.yaml. The question is, I, I was trying to figure out if the, the, the generator, we'll call it the generator because I think the wizard, the word wizard has been confusing or like I keep thinking we're talking about, like in the past we've been talking about different things when we talk about, anyway. So um, I, I, from what I understood, you were saying that the generator we would expect the generator to generate code that has Massachusetts specific code in it, like about courts, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let me share my screen there. I, I'm, I'm talking about Quinton, what Quinton was saying. So Quinton, can you give some feedback on that? Before. What? I mean, so I, that what your response made me think of a whole different way to frame it, which maybe is better too. Okay. Um, than what my original suggestion was. But what I was saying is when we run the wizard, that code should be able to run. And right now, the only state we're generating stuff for is Massachusetts. So it'd be nice if you didn't have to change the file when it was done to get it to run in, in, as part of our project, right? It would be nice. Um, but there's a question of the reason why I brought that up is when we're changing repositories, if things aren't quite 100% co-it yet, then what should be able, what should we be worrying about keeping fixed? And I was thinking, oh, if we always have people include the Massachusetts specific assembly line file, and that in turn includes the general assembly line core file, that seems like a good order of inclusion or a potential order of inclusion, at least hierarchy, then we never have to worry about changes as long as the assembly line MA one stays fixed. 
So another way to think of it is we always generate two separate includes like the core and the Massachusetts one. And those are two separate lines and we have two things to keep fixed, which I think is that would be reasonable too. And that's what I was thinking was my second version of idea, which might be better. Cause then it's easy to say, oh, I want to change my specific one. You get to see the core thing is always included in every, every package. And um, that's visible to the interview author when they download the file that's generated and they know they have to customize the mass, the specific one for their state. And it's just the scope of it is just the specific stuff for their state, which is helpful, I think. Yeah, I mean, so if, if we are, I, I think this does get into specifics if we want to discuss this behavior, which for me is that there's like one thing that is the main Massachusetts specific thing going on, which is the courts. And maybe we should make a list of what specific Massachusetts things are going on. But the main one for me is the courts. And we ourselves have interviews that don't involve the courts. Um, and so that's not really a Massachusetts requirement. That's a Massachusetts requirement when an interview is using the courts. So if we look at that as optional, I believe we should be able to abstract um, to take that out of the picture and we could provide, I, I, I think it, it, may, it may be useful to have that abstraction. And if we want an additional, you know, to add in the courts to various places, then we want to think about how we do that. And I think there are options, um, but it, like they don't, to me, one does not require the other necessarily if I have the correct understanding of what Massachusetts specific means, right? Um, what, what, what Massachusetts specific stuff we have. There might be more than just the states. I know like we certainly have lots of other interviews that aren't, that don't send to the court that are customized to specific laws and procedure and they don't end up sending something to the court. But I don't it necessarily mean that our question files have content specific to Massachusetts though. Right. I wouldn't trust that it's just about the court code. For sure, but it might, I mean, that might be the next question to answer. Well, if we're a next question. about state specific and not state specific, does it matter whether it's about the court or not? Like that's a border that you thought might be there, but it, it may not really matter what it is. We know we need the border. So, so I don't know what the border means. Between right? state specific and non-state specific thing. Right, so I, I, it doesn't matter if it's the courts or not. What I was saying is maybe we can make, like set someone an assignment to look at the basic questions and whatever else we think is relevant and identify what is state specific in there and what is not state specific. And then we can see if it's the courts, if there's also other stuff in there that's state specific and kind of tease, that, tease those out and see where that leaves us. But another part of that is like, if we always in every state, there's a concept of our projects, mostly about forms and letters and things that people can download at the end. But every state have, will have some forms that go to the court. They're just taking out stuff that references the court. Well, that's why I was saying that could be a discussion, right? Because I think there are ways to create abstractions that will leave hooks for people to slot into that they can say, this is how we want, you know, to send this to the court or whatever. And, and the assembly line project leaves a hook for those, for those projects and states to use, right? I mean, otherwise assembly line is creating and maintaining those hooks or like, I don't know what the, another option would be exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, the question right now, like there's no placeholder sent to court. It's always a manual copy and customize. And I was thinking about that. Do we want to, we probably don't want to make people do that. If it is a form that goes to the court, having a standard download screen, which has that code already wired up might be helpful. And then the question is, how do you customize the other content on the screen? Um, I think that's a separate question, though. I, th I think we don't have to. Okay. Yeah. 
I think I think there probably are abstractions we can make use of to, yeah. to, to let people plug and play their their material. I think I could be wrong. I, I don't know. It's a right. I think there are. Um, I, I'm not sure what what they are yet. Like this is the whole thing that we talked about a while ago about how do we want to encourage people to customize questions? Do we want is it easier to copy and paste? Is it easier to, to like go and hunt down a template file, a template block rather and customize that? Um, it's hard to know. Like without testing it a little bit and seeing, and some people will like different things, so that won't be 100%. And also is like about what's maintainable for us and what can let us best enforce our standards without having people cause mistakes that they should, you know, that's part of it too. Yeah. I mean, I think in some ways it's, yeah, we can, if we want, we can also make that a project for someone. I mean, it's something I'm interested in, but depends what else, you know, there is in um, in the queue right now but um like to mock up a couple different ways of dealing with that situation so i think we did that like uh, like a month or two ago okay yeah um, i meant that situation specifically i don't think we did that but maybe we did all right we didn't do the the download screen is it separate because the download screen is like a whole it, it does a, a lot of kind of, it, like there's a lot that's going on there with um, like it's one screen for two functionalities before things are sent to the court and after things are sent to the court. And there may be a way to break that out so that it's more abstractable. And that like, I'm not sure those the, that complexity can be separated from the methodology used to abstract it, but maybe it can. We should just in, have it be informed by our past discussions about like ways to customize questions. That's all. Um, but I think you're right. It, sure. does it probably doesn't just require the same exact solution as customizing a question about a person's name, for example. It does it because it does, you're right. It does a lot of things. Um, okay. And like. Anyway, yeah. Like, so I will say, like, most other platforms have a download screen that you really can't customize. Is that because of the level of complexity required to make it customizable, or is that because there is something else at play? Well, no, I think it's just early design choices. Like, so on, on Law Help Interactive, for example, they support hot docs. That was their first big thing. ADJ Author came along afterwards and said, hey, we're going to make a simpler interface to hot docs so users can do things in a linear way that's a more controlled experience. And hot docs generates documents. So, like, you get a document at the end. Hmm. That's the thing that their system interacts with. They can't control the hot docs interface, they can control it sent us this file. Now we can do something with it. So they had to build, you can't, in Hotdocs interface, you can't customize the download of the file. So LHI took that part over and they have an interface for you to download the file that you can tweak a little bit. Like you can have, you can have a list of next steps, for example. That's something that you can do, which they just added in the last couple of months. You can, so, this yeah. might be an all or nothing thing. Like, I don't know if you can control it, but you can have a download as a one PDF option and you can have a add some more files before you send it to someone else option. That's like all you can customize, but you can't change anything else about like what this screen looks like. So how does that inform our choices? Like is, is, are, are, is there a, a kind of it's, parallel you're drawing here or? Well, I mean, it, if our, if our, if the things that are tricky for us are about like how to let people customize it, and we know that it works on one platform to have people mostly not customize it at all. That actually might be helpful for us to know because it might lead to better standardization of, of what, um, what the screen looks like in a way that's helpful for us. And we might say, okay, that works for another platform. On the other hand, that's also partly why folks like Aleo don't want to stick with 
only using that platform. I don't know if it's on the download screen, but like they don't like that everything is controlled for them in the way that the layout works. Yeah, I mean, if if we want to get more specific for a second, like I can see a situation where, and this is not the whole picture because I don't have the whole picture, um, where the thing that is customizable is, you know, your list of emails or, you know, or the email you can, you can, you know, the, the developer can customize which email things are sent to. I think, I think there's options for more customizability than that. Um, like, I, I think we can give people affordances that they can plug into. I think it may take a little playing around. But what it does now is it shows a button, right? That takes you to an event. So that's different pieces to me. But I think that's. I, th I think there might be a different abstraction we can use for the download screen so that it is actually separate screens instead of like cycling the same screen with a kind of a. I, I, think, I think there are things we can do to make that more easier, easier to work with. I'm a little confused. Is this related to what Quindy is working on, the, the AL documentation? In um, the AL, document. AL documentation? Document. Doc document. Not, not directly, but I mean, the AL document plays a big role in the download screen, I think, and in the send to court screen. I, that, I, that I, looks like the, the final screen, right? I, I just, um, that it, it that is one place you could put it. I don't think AL document is limited to being on the final screen. It's more flexible than that. But um, that is one place that we see a common usage for it. Um, I, uh, what I was trying to express was that if we break it up into kind of a different flow, um, we might be able to make customization a little bit easier to reach. Um, but I know there was a problem with that and I never got to kind of fully understand what the, like why the, if it, if it was just that the choices were made at that time because kind of those were, you know, the convenient choices and then we could just use it or if there were problems with I doing it a different really, way. I think this is an interesting discussion, but I think it's really far afield from like something we can act on. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, all right. I kind of feel like we're pretty good for like this, how to break up the basic questions YAML file. Do you want to just try to take like a minute to go through and name them? And using Lily and Michelle, you both did a lot of good brainstorming on this. Um, so I, I like, first of all, I, I don't know if we do have a convention of underscores for YAML file names. That's um, what we set out in our in our styles document? Uh, well, the basic questions file uses hyphens. Yes, but that was before we made our style our, our style document, right? Now it's time to correct it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can look in the, in the styles <laughs> document, but we like had this whole discussion that everything that could be lowercase underscores, alphanumeric lowercase underscores would be and then, because there would be one convention for everything, as much as possible. That let's was the. Look and see if we, if we already decided it, we shouldn't revisit. It. I think you're right. But let's see. Final names. Um, Where is the style if we look in the style guide, I believe it's it's not just got coding style guide. It's got other style guides. It's got language in there as well. I believe that's the document. Okay. You're right. We does it does say we we wrote down a decision there which says use underscore for most things for everything actually it does. So all right. I think that there's no reason to revisit it. Let's stick with that then. That's fine. All right. So Conan, do you want to share your screen? Sure. And it might that seemed to be what was like causing it to bug out earlier, but who knows, I'll try. Because as soon as I stopped sharing, it was normal. All right, so we're gonna have, I like this idea of having an, a, an umbrella file that's called package. So I guess you can call that AL package. 
And then we have something that's really literally just questions and it's the main core question. So what would be a good name for that? So I know, I know we want this to be simple and quick and I'm sorry about this, but like, if we have things called housing and things that are like the name questions doesn't actually say what it's for. Like it doesn't give it a, I'm not sure there's a better name, but it's just a kind of a misc file. It's kind of misc dianal, right? No, not it's really. Saying. Uh, it's not really because we only ex know that we're going to have a, we're going to be slowly building out the library of specific versions of questions and they might cover a very small content area relative to what the basic question says. Okay, before we, be, be, before the uh, question library, can we have a file that is, that contains all the like metadata, you know, all those top level stuff instead of concrete questions? Yes, definitely. Um, that should be added as a category, I think. So let's just think about that. Is that different from settings configurable option? Configurable option? Oh yeah, yes, that, that's the one, but move it to number B. Okay, just to make it easier to find as we're going down, sure. I like that framework metadata. That does seem clearer than what I've written, which is settings, because that's really what it is, okay. So maybe we call this one, we want them all to start with AL as a prefix, AL metadata. Okay. I think I think if if it's something we see people pulling in individually, then yes. Um, the one thing that's really weird that took a while mm -hmm. for me to debug is if you include just basic dash questions .yaml and you don't have the assembly line package MA virtual port. Sorry. Yes, then it will do the default doc yeah. assemble. Yes, yeah. for sure. So avoiding name collisions is helpful. Yep. Even if they're just for our use. Definitely. So the question, so I think a prefix is good, but do we want AL as the prefix for everything? Seems pretty clear to me. Sure. All right. Um, okay, metadata, what, might, what goes in here, we might change around. I wanna make that clear. We're not locking in what it is, but if we have that okay. idea. Right. So my problem with questions but as a name, again, uh, it, right, right. But that's, very I, I think the problem that I'm trying to solve with the name here, like the, the, pro the pain point I see with this name is that things like housing, you know, what's in housing, things like questions, I don't know what that means. Like, like, is it like, what, what does I, it contain? Like the name doesn't tell me what it contains. Right? Actually, a basic question is, is a good option because of which means everybody needs them. Well, right. then just AL questions. I don't, I don't think basic questions. It just makes the name longer. And it, it doesn't give any infor more information than just questions. It, mm. Well, I, Lily, I think, I, I think you're saying it, it does. Do you want to get on that a little bit? It, it, when you say basic question, it, it, it narrows it down. When you just say questions, people can imagine anything possible into questions. So when you say basic, the, which people were thinking in their basically in their common sense, what is basic? Basic means everybody needs it. That that doesn't that That's doesn't what I mean, track for me. I mean that doesn't mean to me. Like right. basic questions to me is as vague as and as useful as the word questions by itself. It's just like these or are generic questions, questions that or... we think are very useful. Right, like these are a bunch of different kinds of questions that don't have a specific category, but we think are very are commonly used. All right, so common. You can call it common questions, I guess, but it, I don't question. know that it needs to be specified. But okay. So common one thing for us to keep in mind is that we have folks who are alumni of the project who are still continuing on, who are going to be familiar with the phrase "basic questions," and we refer to it like a bunch of places in the documentation. I so think if we're, we're going to change it and make it more, hold on, please don't talk over me. If we're having a very base, very sim, a synonym to basic, uh, that may not. Common question, I think it's good. Common questions, I agree, is good, but I'm a little worried about confusing people unnecessarily if, if it had, means the same thing as basic. General question, no. <laughs> well, is 
is questions the problem? Because then can we think about like, because questions is like a doc symbolism, right? That doesn't even really match the way that the question block isn't, is, doesn't hold questions always, right? That's like, it's kind of a weird phrase. Sure. Um, is there a better term that makes sense? Like, I don't think a, like a baseline question. <laughs> baseline questions. No, you don't want to use question, but what I, well, I think it, it should, uh, maybe after we have other names. AM core? I mean, I, I've, if it's going to include more than just question strings. I'm sorry, Lily. I'm sorry. I didn't hear it till now. String. What? It will only contain question strings, screens, but the question, my wonder is, can we better convey to people who don't already know Doc Assemble, like what's a question? I thought that's what kind of what you were going for, Michelle, like, which is. That was, but then it occurred to me that if it, that I wasn't sure what we were. All right. If it really is questions, I might say screens or pages instead of questions, because questions is a very confusing word, or I find it to be a very confusing word in Doc Assemble. But I, but I also think we kind of, I, I, I at least interrupted Lily. Did you, could you say again what you were saying, Lily? Oh, uh, I forget. Oh, I'm sorry. You I'm sorry. I hate when that happens. What? That was Lily. Core questions. <sighs> that prompt remind you? No, I wanted to say this is the start point where everybody is needs it. Mm -hmm. Needs them. Um, Starting questions, kind of like that. Goes along with baseline. I think the point is like it's the layer, it's the base layer, right? Right, right. Everything I think base, 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 base screens, core base. screens. Um, Scale base. But we do want to convey like, hey, if you don't want anything else from our project, but you do want the way we ask for a person's name, which has four parts and it's standardized, doesn't save you that much time, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I look yeah. back at some of the projects where I asked for in two fields and three fields. I'm like, actually, I do like the way we standardized it. I'd rather not. AL standards. I know we. I know we yeah. talked about trying to like use like use these as standards, at least in some of like some of the conversations we were having with like document in terms of other projects using this in terms like and then being able to like email or some core docs with using those same sort of like standard names. And we also want to convey this idea that like you layer on, you use that, that's the core way you ask for a person's name, for example. And then when you want to change it to be about a housing question, and it's the question about you, your name, all you change is the description, like nothing else changes about it. So it still uses that base layer of information too. That's a part I mean, is base layer? I don't think it's, I think screens, if it's all going to be screens, then it should include the word screens, but core or base or baseline. Mm -hmm. I found I found your description of layer useful, but I think it that just really lengthens the name if we also want screens. I don't know that screens is quite right because it's not the it really isn't about the screens, it's about the fields more than the screens. Yeah. But it doesn't give you the fields one separately. You add to include all the questions. But you can't you can't pick and choose your fields like if you could pick and choose your fields, then I think that would be a great name. Well, I did just say like, it's only about questions, but I didn't really mean just the screens. Cause we, one of the things that we decided a while ago was thinking about how to, this way of like putting the, the fields in the class, right? So that really would be included with that file as well. Yeah, but I, but, I, but I don't see that as being on this page, right, on, on, in this file. Well, that file would have a question which referenced the .py file, which has, but then if you wanted to keep that, if you wanted to keep the fields the same, but customize the question, you would, you would start here. So, so I'm, uh, but I'm saying what this gives you is the screens, right? From this file, you get the screens. You can look at the at the different screen blocks, and 
decide to pick and choose and customize and make your own from it, but you're not getting the individual fields from here, you'd be getting it from a .py. You could copy this question and it would have a model that you could use to adjust the fields, but it would rely on things that this file provided, which was just like just the include line for the .py probably, but maybe also the template files because that's the way we're making it translatable. It would have a series of templates which has the, have the text for each field too. That's the basic framework we're talking about for doing it. So it would all come together. I hear what you're saying. Sure. I do like the idea of conveying things more clearly than questions if that's a barrier. I don't know that screens, it's more specific, but I don't know if it's specific in a way that's helpful for me as an author who's just trying to decide we we'll want to make use of this work that they did over Massachusetts to start my project. This is the file I need. I don't know if it would convey that in a helpful way if we narrowed it down to screens. Even though it's technically correct, I'm just not sure what the person cares about is like, how do you phrase questions? Or how do you phrase, that's the concept. It's just the, the word questions, I think, is what's a little tricky. But yeah, maybe we don't, we just, just forget about, just screen. forget about the questions because I, I'm thinking from the other angle okay I, a while ago we talked about the add specific case young files for example eviction dot young so that is very specific it doesn't say questions just say just say divorce dot young eviction dot young so here we can have a, a, base, a baseline dot young something like that we just avoid question altogether I do think baseline seems to work the best of all the ones that we've had so far. Okay, so maybe we call this one AL baseline and we don't say anything about questions or fields or screens. And we know question library because it's a DACA symbolism. Um, how do people feel about that? Like, does that feel, it makes it short. People seem to react well to baseline. I feel like, yeah, if it's still at baseline.yaml, people sort of like people who know Docker symbol will know questions will be in there. And people who don't know Docker symbol won't be confused. So I think that's I, fine. Yeah. I'm I'm I have I'm not completely satisfied with I'm not coming up with anything better. So that sounds great. I mean, I think I didn't I don't think any of these are like the and if we want to change something later is if we have that al package.yaml i think it will be super easy to iterate on it so you know i think i think that's better than a lot of the other options we've come up with so one other thought is if we have these content specific ones how do we know that shouldn't the name convey something that it's related to no we can't we can add a Okay, here we can define what we want, want to include. In the file itself, we can add a comment where we can lay out what is in that file. By the way, if anyone wants to read it, they, they, they get a clear idea. I think, I think Quentin is talking about, he, I think he's moved on to item D. Oh. So we're not yeah, on right. yeah. baseline any, in, anymore. It relates yeah. to this still, but because it like it calls back. So if we have our AL baseline, how, how do we convey that the housing.yaml, for example, um, and then family law. And of course we could have even more specific, we could have eviction, as you said. What do you mean? What to how do we convey that it's part of the question library concept still? Because we have different types of ideas. Maybe one way is we just drop the AL prefix and then maybe we should drop the AL prefix. Here. Right, right. Those are all just like only quest files don't have AL at the beginning. So we're trying to convey that or instead they, of that AL. it has questions in it because I mean we said YAML has questions in it, and that's part of the reason that the name baseline works, right? No. I'm I'm not I'm not sure what, what no, I think, I, I think, the I think we're describing. I, I think he, he's saying we have a, a, a bunch of young files. They all belong to this question library category. How do we relate them together to exactly. their name? Yes. How about instead of using L, or in addition to that, we added like a Q library, something like that. So they have a common identity. 
Yeah, it's like, is, do we need a prefix or the, or it could be like, there's no prefix, which is the way that you know that that's what they are. But the idea here for these files should be like, they don't do anything. You include them and you have the questions that are in there are provided for you, but they shouldn't like be setting anything in the background. They shouldn't change the display of things that aren't a specific question. I think, I think AL or housing, I mean, AL with AL or without AL. I think I think ones that set things in the background are the ones that need to be named as such, and anything that isn't clearly is you know isn't clear that it okay. sets That's things. One concept. Can we hear uh, like some other thoughts on that? Sure. So, what were you thinking about, Lily, when you said? A prefix, what would be a prefix or a suffix that we could use? I was thinking, okay, or the baseline and or, uh, and the this case specific uh, young files, if they all belong to the question library, we can use a common pre um, common prefix, either as you said, just use L or we replace it or in addition to it, use uh, like a question library or somehow make, make it short, but question library kind of prefix so that they have a common identity. Okay, sorry. Um, so See, so a AL question library, it's a little bit long. Uh, Michelle's thought was add a prefix to the files that do set things. I don't think that's that helpful because we have most of the files that do that. And we just have these ones that only are about question library concept that don't do that. Like those are the ones that should always be safe to include. So I don't, but like the fact that the other ones set things isn't you doesn't really group them together in a way that's ontologically helpful, I think. But these question ones are related in more than one way. Like they all are about ways that things we ask for information on the screen. And there's like one baseline one and a bunch of ones that are content specific. That feels like a more unifying concept to me. Um, but yeah. I, so I mean, I, content, I, like I don't know. No prefix. But I think maybe. I mean, I think. So, so in, I'm I'm saying instead of putting like content or library in front of these, we'd say sets in front of the other ones, which is shorter. That's all that's that I'm shorter, saying. But I just don't think it's a unifying concept that's helpful ontologically. That's what I am saying. I don't. I don't think that makes sense to to mark all the ones that set things using like a convention like that. I, but I'm writing it down, but I just, I just, I think I'd like to keep iterating on the idea of like, how do we group these files that are just questions? Like the fact that they don't set things isn't really the, the part that's meaningful. It's like, these are the ones someone might include in a whole different project. That's, I guess, more unifying concept to me. I mean. Like saying you can include everything except for these specific ones. But those are the ones that like that's conveying information to people who might want to borrow files from our project, but it doesn't help us in any way as we're organizing our work. That's our main goal. Right. So we, we can make it the, the prefix short, like like just a Q L I B. So that means question library, right? So we could do Q L. No, Q Q L I B, just one. Oh, okay. Even just QL, but yeah. Okay. Or QL, For, QL. Can we do, can we, but we don't want something like screen library or, or like page library? Like we were saying question is a confusing concept. I just don't know that screen adds actually a lot, but um, I, but it's worth us writing it down. But screen, if you, the download screen is also a screen, which is different from the question screen, right? I mean, they're all screens. Right, so that's they're why. Not, they're not all questions, because questions are. 
so then the space the, talking about English, right? Okay, so put a Q in front of it means that those those screens are for questions. Good question, actually. Where does the download screen go? Would that go into one of the baseline questions or would it go into like the court page? But every interview needs a download screen, so. It does feel I think, like I think the send screen goes in the court stuff. The download screen is. Right. And the intro screen feels like oh, definitely that goes in the baseline. Although maybe. The intro screen, I think, is organization specific. Maybe organization specific too, yeah. Um, Do we want to have a, a placeholder anyway that gets overridden? I mean, that's one nice thing about how DocAssemble works with precedents, right? Like you have. You have your basic thing, it will work. It's nice to be able to generate that stuff that works, but then you can customize it by having your own version of it. So if we were to have a baseline version of the intro screen, which every interview should have, really, would that go in the baseline file? I think so. If if it's a generic, you know. Maybe I'm coming around a little bit to screen library. Um, although I think like the part that's most useful to people who are importing it is going to be the concept of questions and fields. But now as I think about it, like if we're going to be including things that aren't asking for a question, asking a question or including a field, maybe screen is more helpful. I don't think screen um, or page necessarily. Okay. Hot docs are called dialogues, but they're not, that's not a concept in DocAssemble at all. I mean, they they are a screen, like they represent one, whatever is displayed on one screen, right? Like the the page, like, like when a, a person goes from one page to another, that's what these blocks represent is the content. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's very device specific, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's the only device we're supporting right now. But for example, um, if we had a SMS interface to our question. Mm, I see what you're saying. It would no longer work for that. Mm. Questions actually still would work. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I don't know if we'd want to include- Content? Let's, content is, everything is content. So that doesn't, to me, convey anything specific about what it is. Well, I don't think it's settings and I don't think it's metadata or configuration stuff or style content is like. I don't know that that's always true, especially when you're looking at a repository. Like I can see oh, if you're in the world of like copy editing and stuff, there's the content and there's the structure, but the, the contents of a package a .py file is a content of a package. So when we're in that world, that domain, I don't know if it's distinguishing enough. Okay. I do I do see your point about it. It's a different idea for sure. But I think context specific wise, it might not be, it might be too general, too broad of a classification. Okay. I was gonna say this might be like a off, like very off the path a bit, but I feel like all this conversation that we've had for like the past 30 minutes or so about all these different names would be like a great like introduction to like assembly line from like X like to like X audience or like like as like lawyers or like writers or as like developers and stuff like that. And so I feel like a lot of these like very specific things that we're going back and forth are all very really good ways to think about it that maybe we just have like is somewhere in like a like easy to find like doc like documentation like read me or documentation read me or something that's just like like if you're thinking about like trying to edit like the content from a copywriting standpoint you should be looking for x name um that sort of has oh. all of these mappings and stuff so but yeah that's, that might be a bit that's that's out of the scope for what we're trying to do now but just an idea to keep in mind i guess yeah yeah Now we're going along, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> this feels like we're getting so close to being able to have stuff. Well, let's move on from the question stuff because that feels like we haven't decided it yet. But we could do some of the other ones really quickly. 
What about state specific content and organization specific content? Those should have a similar structure. I just think, I yeah. mean, state specific content should be handled. I think organization or state specific content, yeah, should have AL or just the state. It depends. Is it the state or organization that's developing it or is assembly line developing it in assembly? Like is assembly line going to support it rather is more the question. Um, I don't know if we have to answer that to get to this naming thing. I don't know the answer to it yet. Well, I mean, AL implies that assembly line is going to support it. Can, can you give, Quentin, can you give some examples under these two categories? Yeah, maybe that would help. We have like ALMA, or we might want to use Massachusetts to spell it out because who knows what we're No, give, give a concrete example, for example, like a code name, something like that. Okay. Like like a file or yeah, like like a use case. Right. right. All right. I think we kind of decided I had thought separate sending to the court would be its own task. And it feels like most people wanted that to be here. I do think these might be two files still. The reason why is I feel like someone shouldn't have to customize the sending to court code to be able to stand this up in their own state. So I guess is the is is it Whenever, whenever you say send into court, I think it is more like specifically sending to that, like that state specific court. Is it just like sending it somewhere in general though? And that's the thing that can be. That's a like good way of putting specified. that, yeah. Because either you're like that, because send, would sending to court also include emailing, e-filing, and then like at least some sort of broad interface to like email it or send it to somewhere else? Um, and then just where where exactly they get sent can it could be set or specified in the state specific. Yeah, but yeah, the hooks we I'm provide like for sending to court. I guess I'm thinking like part of it is like we have the functional versus on screen distinction. That's the main driver for this. So I'm thinking like absolutely yes, that could be. Those could all be state specific things, but they're state specific things where it's like, okay, implement this interface and you're good. Don't touch this part of the file because it does stuff that will work for you. And then there's like, customize this to your heart's content because it's all just affecting the thing that the user sees. And we know you might want to customize it. Like maybe you want to put your own logo in, um, you want to put in the links to a glossary for your state and using state specific terms for your we don't have a glossary enabled on this project. That was actually one of the original early things we had started working. Someone started working on it, which we should revive. Um, so then maybe Luke, Luke, might, this Luke, sentence... Luke might like that project as well. In I'm front like, yeah. of this sentence, just add a non-customizable something like that. Well, to me, it's still like the visual display um, on screen stuff. Just the back end stuff. How does it does it make sense to think about it as because to me that that seems more of like organizational specific, but sometimes you might have an organization that is within a state that like overrides it, but it still seems like it's organization specific. You're just treating the state as an organization as opposed to the state as like a judicial system or a court system. Yeah, definitely. So it's like Every state would have at least one custom file. And then you might come in for your organization and you have your own tweak on it that you want to like have your, your organization's branding. And that could really be everything, I suppose. Like obviously the organization specific content would no, not necessarily have standard stuff in it, but we might model that for people so they know what kind of things to put in there. And it would be things like the branding. Um, I... I think the only things that assembly line is going to support and like develop with should start with AL. That's Otherwise, one. Concept. I think it's a bit confusing. Um, I, I, I guess it, is it things that we support or is it things that like work with our setup? 
Yeah, I was kind of thinking Bryce's concept is what why I was thinking we could still keep the prefix because like like the same way that every single thing that we write is Docker symbol dash, as opposed to just our our normal form. Which I guess I don't know if that's a hard coded thing a Docker symbol that it assumes. It is, not... and it's not necessarily oh, what okay. I find to be a strength, but <laughs> that's fair. Um, um, it's a namespacing thing for how packages work in Python. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, I mean, so how would you, if but, you, but, were... but that, that would also Let's not be under our control. Oh, we can make that convention, but it wouldn't be under our control because anybody can name their repository or their files, whatever they want. Of course. Like we can say the convention is put the state name in front of it or put the organization, you know, acronym in front of it. Yep, we could make our convention. That's what we're trying to do now. Because I think these files, like we could all have just one file for all of them, right? We're trying to model for us, anyone who wants to fork our stuff and or just to use it as is, but put in the overlay content. What do they need to do? So it's kind of making me think we actually have four repositories, right? We have the assembly line wizard, we have the assembly line core, assembly line Massachusetts, and then assembly line NAS access. Um, I don't know if NAS access is the right thing, but if we wanted to model- Yeah, yeah, those are the four we have listed, yeah. yeah. I think we do have four listed right now. Okay. Um, we have some Massachusetts specific stuff and that would in, in turn in, include the MA courts. I thought MA co courts was the Massachusetts specific one and then there was mass access. MA courts is, is nothing to do with the assembly line project except that the assembly line project depends on it. It is a database of courts. That the mass access project depends on it, yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm saying we might, if we're trying to model these files Mm -hmm. They deserve, these two certainly seem to deserve their own repository, right? Because you want to let people in Massachusetts, you know, in Springfield, they want to have their own server that has Springfield specific forms. They should be able to use our Massachusetts uh, content and override it with their organization specific content. We want to model them just creating a new repository and including this one. So I may, maybe part of the struggle I'm having here is like who is owning the state repository? Because by saying this is the Massachusetts repository, we're saying, you know, we are representing Massachusetts in some way, or like I don't I don't understand what that relationship looks like exactly. Like, does this is this the repository that belongs to the state to do with as they choose? Or like Oh, it's it's a, a person stands up and says, hey, I want to maintain this for the state. I mean, it's, it, it's, it comes from a, a place of hubris, but it's decentralized. It doesn't have to be command control structure. Okay. But you so still, I, I just, collab, like, let's say three organizations, they want to collaborate and build state-specific content. I mean, each one has organization-specific stuff on top of it. Sure, sure. I don't know the way I've seen, but you know what? I've I come from a different environment. Never mind. That's fine. Um, and, yeah, so, I'm part of huh? that's worked really well. Um, sometimes people, you know, anyway, like let's say you had your own fork of it. But someone else got there first. They made the Massachusetts one. You can be yours. Can be and Massachusetts Suffolk if you're Suffolk University and you want to have your own version of the stuff. You'll have to sure. explain it to people, but there's no real way to stop people from that, the name that they want. Okay. Um, I think, I, I don't know, I think this part is kind of talked out, right? Like, I personally think that adding the prefix AL gives some kind of responsibility to the assembly line repository, but you don't, and maybe that's a difference between JavaScript and Python, or just a difference in how we see the world, and that's fine. Um, but well, I also don't see it as, as much of an immediate issue, but... It might, you know. if, we, if we think those are different repositories, I guess it's a more immediate thing. 
I mean, what's an alternative that makes it clear it com is compatible with the assembly line or depends on it? That's not. I've been trying to think. Because it is a dependency, of... right? Like we don't we don't list every dependency we have. Like, would they do I, I AL Massachusetts the, Mass Access? Oh, think... sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, no, I was going to say like. I was, I've been trying to think of a better name than like, like assembly line plugin, which I feel like sort of captures both that like it works with it, but also that it's not, um, like it it's not like it's clear that we're not like we don't own it or anything. I guess Michelle has a point that it is like if it's just in your dependency that. Well, I well I, I agree with that for like the organization specific. Like maybe organizations don't need to have AL in it. Um, but like I feel like the state stuff does because like organizations will will be building on it and they'll expect it to have some similar structure. Okay. But at least for organizations, I don't think like I think Michelle might be right, which you are in the middle of that. You should. Keep no worries. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Just it. It may be just that like it's it's a little strange to me to. Um, list your dependencies in the name and so but I you know I think Bryce is Bryce is like I don't think it's I wasn't done speaking so Go ahead. um I think I think Bryce has a good point as well I don't I don't see that line I think as clearly as other people see but that's fine that's so it. I think when you are building a tool that's meant that's really tightly integrated with another tool. Like it is a convention to have a name that reflects that relationship. Um, until maybe some projects like build their own name recognition in a way where it's like, you don't have to include the project that you're kind of a child of or related to or depend on. But a lot of projects, at least they start out with a name that's really tightly coupled to the one that they are integrated with. Not always, but I do find that's like a pretty solid convention. Okay. Uh, I mean, either way, we're certainly making the Massachusetts specific one. I mean, yes, we don't have to be tied to that. But like, it feels like this might be good dividing line going between Massachusetts and organization specific one, state and organization level it might be placed. Sure. Maybe we're just all done with that. Um, all right, now we have, I have a couple minutes, so I have another meeting at one. Um, okay. Do we have, uh, we just have like two more files, really. We haven't settled on the question library stuff. It's the hardest one. But visual appearance? I would, I mean, in, in JavaScript parlance, in, in a lot, in, and in game as well, skin is often you know what, is skin used with JavaScript? I'm not sure. I find skin very useful as a concept because it means just the outs how the outside looks, right? Um, but I don't, I don't know what that looks like if you're not familiar with that. Like, I'd love to, I, 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 other, other impressions are totally legitimate. Beam might be a little bit more neutral than skin, mm, but it implies yeah. only visual stuff. Um, I, f I feel like skin, I do understand what that means, like going back to like- Theme uh, is great, yeah. Uh, like yeah. I think theme is great. Yeah, I feel like at least from coming, like I've done some like, like WordPress stuff, theme would also include stuff like footers and changing un like and under elements and stuff like that too. So I feel it's not super inclusive or super- ex Exclusive. Exclusive thing. Great. Okay. Well, that's easy actually. Then, if we, if everyone kind of thinks that it's broad enough to capture it, Lily, do you have thoughts on it? I don't know if you're kind of. Um, my my only question is that there is this same concept in Docker symbol already. Is that that's theme? You mean? Wait, is there? <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> you can include a theme, a bootstrap theme. Is that what you mean, Lily? And it's actually like a very a navigation where you can use the bootstrap that exactly. Um, so 
I know this is including that. Uh, would this make people think that that's only, I don't know how to even express it. it. The, a bootstrap theme really isn't about content. There isn't like there's, it is really a surface, very visual. If, if I were thinking of theme, it to me would feel like a very visual thing, but I like just a, you know, a skin, like a, um, no, to me, it, to me, it doesn't change things like words on the page, but I can see it. There it is, it is a also thing. a popular concept, uh, that, like it, for example, in, 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 in Drupal website, where you just choose a theme, then that changes the, the appearance of your website. Right. Right. But um, it doesn't change the content. But, but well, but, it really depends on what you mean by content, right? Because I think, as Bryce pointed out, things like um, a logo, you could call that content or you could call it appearance. Um, and maybe there's like a standard text element that's displayed, displayed on the screen that's still could be considered part of the theme. It's like it's your skeleton before you start putting in the specific content that's for your site. But it can be it can be a little bit broader than just like the way things are laid out on the screen in some cases, I think. OK, that looks good. Same. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that's still worth thinking about a little bit more. I feel like um, this idea for how to tie in the, the, this content specific kind of files subject matter specific kind of files, I think is worth thinking about more. Maybe we can keep that conversation going on Slack. Mm. So the can we, can we last skip one meeting? Just call, just like this. Do a, have this for next week, you mean? Or in between? No, additional one. Add an additional one just to finish this topic? Right. Just okay. Finish. I'm good. This week is, you know, I don't have any more classes and stuff this week, so it's more open than it used to be. <laughs> That's uh, nice. That's really well, nice. It is what it is, at least. Um, if anybody can stay on that, I really wanted to figure out some test stuff, but that's OK. Um, um, I, have I, gotta, I really have to go. But maybe what about after Teaching Tuesday? Does that work for people tomorrow? Let me check. Um, how about Wednesday? <laughs> Wednesday. Oh, of course. I forgot you don't. You only work on Wednesdays. Yes. Right. Okay, no Wednesday between 10 and noon. OK, I'm good. And then, is that good? Uh, I think probably. Okay. I, I think you're right. I think I might have to work on, but yeah, okay. It's it's painful, but it's good for, um, yeah, it's good for us to finish this. <laughs> and I think we are making way more progress in our meetings, even if they're long meetings, than when we try to work independently. So this see, it feels good. Okay, let's tr let's shoot for Wednesday, ten. Uh, I said ten to noon, but actually it's ten thirty. I have a meeting at ten. That's still that an hour and a half should be good, I think, though, right? 10 30? Yeah. Okay. Good for me. Okay. 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 Um, I mean, actually, I could even do later if we needed to, but it's also good to set a limit. All right. But I better go to my other meeting that I'm late for now. But um, okay. all right. Good discussion, everybody. Thanks, everyone who did all that pre work. And thanks for going through this stuff with me. Um, it was really helpful. Yeah, thank you, right. everybody. That was a really good discussion. Um, does this stay open after you log off? Why don't we close it? I feel like I never can catch up when there's meetings that I'm not in that we're trying to decide on stuff. But if people want to have a new one, that's fine to talk I about. I just wanted to get some opinions about testing stuff. But mm -hmm. I don't think we've made any decisions. Go. Any Sorry. Decisions. Okay, everybody okay. has to go. Right. Bryce, you want to get on it? I mean, if you're free, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can thoughts on, on it. I'll, I'll, we'll do a separate one. Okay. okay.